Hello, I am Officer Cadet Martinez Chung. In this lecture, we will go over one of the most important parts of the airplane, the wing. Alright, so wings have different configurations when it comes to aircraft. One of them is monoplanes. As you can see, monoplanes only have one set of wings. As opposed to biplanes, we have two set of wings. It's kind of like old World War I aircraft. Next up, we can also classify aircraft depending on where the wing is located relative to the fuselage. For example, high wing aircraft have the wings on top of the fuselage. So, like the Cessna 172 there. Mid wing aircraft have the wings in the middle of the fuselage. So, kind of like the one next to it. And then finally, low wing aircraft have the wings at the bottom of the fuselage. Each of them have their own pros and cons. But uh, yet, they are beyond the scope of this lesson. Alright, internal construction of the wing. First thing you will know about how the wing is built is this, what we call the spars. These spars run lengthwise throughout the wing. So from the wing root to the wing tip. Alright, and they protect the wing against any sort of torsion or twisting. So kind of, so think of it like spars like this, they prevent any sort of twisting going on. Alright? These are known as these are known as the main members of the wing. This is very important to know. Next up we have the ribs. So the ribs run from the leading edge of the wing down to the trailing edge of the wing. Okay? So think of it like your own ribs, right? So Airplane wings also have ribs. Right. Another thing about ribs you should know is that they also give the wing its the framework, so its shape, its unique Bernoulli-like shape, which you may or may not have seen before. All right? There's also images that here you can see there are different types of constructions for ribs. Some of them are web ribs. Some can be truss ribs. It's, again, it's just a design preference. It is go. It goes beyond the scope of this course. Next, there are what we call compression struts. Right. So what compression struts are, they're usually steel tubes. They're, pra they're placed at regular intervals within the wing. Right. They go between the front and the rear of the spars. Right. What they do is they take compression loads. So if you think your spars like so, then they prevent the wing from collapsing in like this. Next up, is drag or anti-drag wires. So as the name suggests, they take drag loads and anti-drag loads. Right? They run diagonally from the, from the front to the rear spars. And that is really all you need to know within the scope of this course. Right? Ailerons. Some of you may be familiar with ailerons. What they are is they are immovable section attached near the edge of the wing, near the trailing edge. Right? As one moves upward, the other one tends to move downward, like so. They, they alternate. Okay. Next up we have what we call flaps. So what flaps are again, they're another movable section, right? But instead of going up in opposite directions, they both drop or raise together. Right? They're located again close to the to the wing root and by the trailing edge. So if the aileron is my hand right here, then the flap will be somewhere back here. All right? And we will go more about uh, flaps in future lessons. Next up is an important term you should know, what we call the wingspan. Right? The wingspan is what we call the maximum distance between wingtip to wingtip. The cord. So what the cord is, is an imaginary straight line. So this is just mainly for design purposes or calculation purposes. So if you think of the shape of the wing, right, and imagine there's a line cutting right through it. Right? That would be the cord. It joins the leading edge and the trailing edge of the wing. You will see how this actually applies in future lessons as well. Struts. Right. So what struts are is they extend from the fuselage they attach for the, to the bottom of the wing, and they support the wings. 
All right? You, you may have seen this in the air cadet gliders, the Schleicher 233As. Since they have very long and very heavy wings, the strut helps so they don't droop too much. Like so. Next up, we have the engine cowl. So this is the protective housing for the engines. All right? An engine is very blocky and rough. It creates a lot of drag. Therefore, we put it in a case that is rounded, more streamlined and aerodynamic. Okay. There's air ducts usually at the front, and those cool the engine as the airplane moves forward. All right. Confirmation stage. All right. So what structure extends out from the fuselage to the midsection of the wing? Is it A, cords, B, struts, C, drag wires, or D, spars? You can pause the video and think about it for a second. And the answer is The answer is the struts. So remember, the struts go from the fuselage up to around the middle of the wing. So they get support. Next up, what is the main member of the wing that runs from the wing tip to the wing root? Is it A, the spars, B, the ribs, C, the compression struts, or D, anti-drag wires? Pause the video and think about it for a second. And the answer is the spars. You may also remember them as the main member of the wings. Undercarriage and landing gear. So as much as we like to go fly and spend time in the air, eventually you have to land. And for that, we have landing gear. All right. So the function of landing gear is to, for one, absorb the shock of landing. I'm very sure if you, most of you have been in a commercial aircraft before, you can feel that the landings tend to be not as smooth. Next up, again, is to support the weight of the airplane and to enable it to move around the ground. If you handle landing gear, an airplane will just stay stuck, essentially. All right? A landing gear may be fixed or retractable. So fixed landing gears you may have seen in the gliders or Cessna 172s in that the landing gear sticks out and it just stays there. Retractable landing gear you may have seen in more modern aircraft or commercial aircraft where the landing gear retracts into the wing once you're up in the air to reduce drag. All right. There are two types of landing gear configuration. First of all is the tricycle. So if you think of a tricycle with two wheels at the back and one wheel at the front, that's essentially what it is, all right? So a tricycle gear will have two wheels in the back and one nose wheel up in the front. This is usually found in modern aircraft, so commercial aircraft and Cessna 172s. Next up is the tailwheel configuration. This one you may have seen in the tow planes that we use in that there are two front main wheels and then there's one wheel in the back at the tail. That's what's called a tail wheel. Propulsion system. The propulsion system in a modern general aviation airplane is with a few things. First, it is gasoline powered, so it uses fuel, just like your car, all the different type of fuel in your car does. All right? It's air cooled and it's internal combustion engines. This engine drives a two or three blade propeller, usually. Mm -hmm. So in essence, general aviation engines are not that much different from, from the engines you have in your own car. All right. There's also equipment, radios, and instruments that we need. All right. So these are all located inside the cockpit where the pilot is, so he has access to them. So first of all is radio. This enables contact with ground, air traffic control, and other aircraft, which is very important in aviation and in maintaining safety. 
Then we have the instrument panel, sometimes referred to as the six pack. Right? This is where you have your airspeed indicator, your altimeter, compass, all these different instruments that give you different different info, like your speed, your altitude, and so on. Next we have an emergency locator transmitter. So what this is, is an antenna that broadcasts an SOS signal over the emergency frequency. Okay. So in, in essence, it has a switch, which you can turn on if you're in danger. You'll set broadcast a message, and then hopefully somebody will come and rescue you. So search and rescue teams will be dispatched. It will also automatically trigger if you essentially crash. So it's a very, very hard landing to the point where the ELT detects a drastic change in acceleration as you hit the ground, then it will automatically engage and send it to the stress skull. Confirmation stage. All right, so modern generation, modern general aviation airplanes are generally A, gasoline powered, B, air cooled, C, internal combustion engine, or D, all of the above. I'll give you a second to think about it. And the answer is, all of the above. Next up, what is the function of landing gear? To A, absorb chalk, B, support weight, C, enable ground movement, or D, all of the above. You can pause the video and think about it for a second. And the answer is, D, all of the above. All right, that concludes this lesson. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, queries, or random outbursts, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and happy landings.